Bless the Lord, O my soul, blessed art thou, Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all he hath done for thee, who is gracious unto all thine iniquities. First of all, I want to greet Metropolitan Basilios, the Metropolitan of the Antiochian Archdiocese in Australia, and, and tell you how flattered I am to have been asked to speak to your young people um, through the Divine Lantern podcast. It's a great honor. I have to say to you young people that I have a special place in my heart. In fact, I'm often called grandpa by young men and women who come here to the monastery and occasionally even by some of my monks. And I have to tell you at the age of 77, I certainly fit the scene. I am a grandpa and like a grandpa, I love young people, especially Orthodox young people. We live in a world that is self-worshipping. I used to teach college many years ago, many, many years ago. And the one thing that I noticed about some of the faculty members and certainly the students is this fear of not meeting the mark, of not succeeding, not being a good student, not finding a good job when they, rec when they uh, graduated from college, uh, not making something of their lives. But this is that moment when we need to think exactly what does it mean ultimately to be successful in this life. And that is the moment when we contemplate the fact that the Lord in his great and loving mercy came down incarnated in our midst and the second person of the Holy Trinity took on our flesh that we might be redeemed and enlightened. It is that moment that it became possible for us to be a child of God. It is that time when the Logos by, by whom the world and even the cosmos was created, condescended to join himself to us. When we were conceived in the womb, God bestowed upon us the noose, the eye of the soul. The noose is what gives us the ability to commune with God and to and it's what separates us from the animals. Animals have souls, according to many church fathers, but they don't have the noose. So what does that mean for us? It means that we must remember that it is not about what we do and what we accomplished and how successful we become in this life, but it means how are, is our relationship with the Lord of hosts preparing us for the second life, the second kingdom to come? The Lord gave us this life, not as the sole place to make success of ourselves or not, but rather bringing us closer to his heart and preparing us for the life eternal. We can become very successful people. We can graduate from college. We can get a doctorate. We can get the job, the dream job of our lives. But if we haven't deepened our relationship with God, we have gained nothing. And how do we do that? Well, first and foremost, we must remember 
that we are not in this world, which ultimately is, means that we're destined to die. I look at pictures of myself back in my college days and pictures with me with my friends and I think, oh my gosh, how we've all aged tragically. But it is about our journey into the heart of God. And what does that require of us? Well, first of all, it's important that we surround ourselves with like-minded people who also realize the importance of that journey to God and who have embraced orthodoxy. Because together, as Orthodox Christians, we move forward and we journey into God's heart and we prepare ourselves for life eternal. It's not about this life, it's about eternal life. It's not about success in this life, but it's about joining ourselves ultimately with the saints in heaven who have already won the good fight. We here in the church militant on earth join us with the, mil the church triumphant in heaven. That's the goal. That is what it means to be an Orthodox Christian. Now that doesn't mean that we don't try hard in college or try to be the best employee that we can be or the best father that we can be to our children. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying that our priorities need to be focused on God and our relationship with God. And we trust that Jesus Christ help us to refrain from all acts and signs of selfishness. One thing we can do as Orthodox Christians is be a loving beacon to those who do not know God and be a support to those who know God and are Orthodox Christians but are struggling. We all are struggling. I'm struggling. But the Lord of hosts is a merciful God. So it's like the little boy who walks into the room, the little four-year-old, and he puts his fist in the air and he tells his dad, Daddy, I hate you. And a loving father reaches out, lifts up his child, embraces him, and says, but Daddy loves you. And that's how God is with us. So we do not want to give in to despair, thinking, oh, I'm a bad person, I'll never succeed, why even try, why even bother? But like that little child, knowing that we have a loving Father who embraces us, and every time we fall down, we get up again, and we get up again with our loving Father's embrace, lifting us up on our feet, and telling us that he loves us. More than 40 years ago, when I embraced Orthodox monasticism, I remember going to my spiritual father, Archimandrite Dimitri, of blessed memory. This is him right here. And I told him, I said, I'm not sure that I can do this. I, I'm not sure I can be a monk. I said, when I go out into the community, and people are looking at me and I know that they have every expectation of what a monk should be like and I'm failing at it utterly. And I said when I go into the church on Sunday for liturgy I feel the same way that people are looking at me and thinking what kind of person is he that he claims to be a monk but look at him he's just no different than us. And I said I just don't know whether I can do this any longer. And Father Dimitri said to me something that I've never forgotten. He said, God is in the process of illuminating you. Not illuminating them, but illuminating you. 
So as long as you're putting on this image of somebody else that you're not, you are preventing that illumination and that transformation to take place. So be yourself. Be yourself. And I remember saying, not that. I'm not a good person. And he said, but God will change you. And, and God in, in his work in your heart will transform you and make you into a good person into a holy person. So you need to keep your focus on God. And I said, well, how do I do that? And he said, by networking with other Orthodox Christians, whether they be monks or not, find people in the parish that you are going to on Sundays who are pious and hang with them. There's an old lady that is the most pious person in the parish. Get to know her. Sit down and have a cup of tea after liturgy with her. And let that relationship with her work in your heart. Find young people like yourself, whether they be monastics or not, and interact with them and befriend them and do things with them. To be a serious Orthodox Christian doesn't mean that we are always saying the Jesus prayer and that we are always going to church and that we're always strict with the fast and all of that. Those are all good things. But what it does mean is that we surround ourselves with people who have a heart for Jesus and who are with us in this struggle. And we remember that in Orthodoxy, our faith is not about what's up here. It's about what is in the heart, the noose. That, that place, the eye of the soul that God has created in us, that he's planted in us, that gives us the ability to have that relationship. So what do we do? How do we do that? We do that by surrounding ourselves with people who are also tempt, attempting, attempting to do that. We make sure that our primary social life is with other Christians. And that means if you're a young person, whether you're college or after college or in the workplace, that you give adequate time to nurture those kinds of relationships so that you don't have those moments of temptation of the secular nature that distract you. And most of all, we need to make sure that we do not succumb to despondency. In those moments when we are feeling despondent, and that's part of human nature to do so, is, are the times when we reach out to our friends and family who are believers and just have time with them. Have time with them. It doesn't mean that you can't go to a tavern and have a beer with your friends. But it does mean that when you are there, you limit your intake and you put most of your focus on being with a friend or friends who are devout Christians and who realize that ultimately this life that we have that God has given to us, that God has gifted to us, is for our salvation. And when we have times of struggle, and we feel despondent, and we are suffering, we remember that suffering in the Orthodox mind is salvific. It leads us into the heart of God. So all of you dear ones who are listening to this message in Australia, know that Abbot Trifon loves you and prays for you. Son and immortal word.